Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here with the Raptors Digest reacting to some Toronto Raptors news right here. Obviously, the Toronto Raptors won a championship last season, or yeah, last season now, two seasons ago now, after making a big risk, a big trade for a superstar. And you guys saw the title of this video. The Toronto Raptors are currently the have the third best betting odds to land James Harden. And in the past, Riker, you and I have been skeptical of the betting odds, but there was one time of betting odds that you and I sort of rode off to the side and it ended up leading to the Toronto Raptors acquiring a, a big name player, so to speak. And that player ended up being Kawhi Leonard. I remember you and I infamously said once these odds came out in the video that we should probably have a better shot of landing LaMarcus Aldridge. So you can't really write off these betting odds, Riker. Are you happy with this, sad about this? Uh, let, let us know as, as the intro plays again. <laughs> Let me, <laughs> do we, am I waiting? Or... Yeah, you're good, you're good, you're good. Okay, Ben, let me take my, my thoughts about the Raptors' position on this betting odds, put that to the side for a second, and let, let me just follow up on what you just said. You're absolutely right, because if, if anybody ever has any criticism that we're, we're maybe pushing a little bit too hard that Giannis could potentially become a Raptor next offseason, or maybe there'll be a midseason trade, or that, James Harden could be flipped by some player on the Raptors. You know, remember that we straight up traded DeMar DeRozan <laughs> one for one with Kawhi Leonard and got Danny Green, who was until the finals very good. And so, and in Jakob Pertle, like seriously, we we traded him one for one, and they gave us even more back in return. So I just didn't want to dwell. I didn't want to leave that alone. That needed to be emphasized, Ben. But my thoughts immediately are ew. Ugh gross stay far away from this trade because there's only two players that could make this you have to offer up van vliet or pascal siakam and i'm not opposed to trading pascal siakam and maybe that's a radical thing to say but if you look at our depth chart at the four and the five position and you go all of a sudden trade the only really veteran type player that can maybe put up points in the postseason from the four or five slot you'd be gutted. You wouldn't be able to do it. So Ben, I, I don't think this makes sense from the Raptors, but there's a lot of people DMing us, commenting on it, saying they want him. Yeah, no, it's definitely an interesting thing. And there hasn't been many rumors from reporters or anything like that surrounding the Toronto Raptors targeting him, maybe Vegas. And I'll pull up the, the betting odds on the screen now. So we're currently behind the Miami Heat, who have been significantly rumored, a team that James Harden has added to his desired destinations. The Brooklyn Nets, who are obviously the first team that were in the running for James Harden, it seemed like. It seemed like he wanted to go play with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. And then the Toronto Raptors are right there at plus 350, not super far behind those teams in uh, the betting odds for James Harden. So it's, it's not something that you and I would sort of expect to happen or anything like that. But in the same vein, we didn't expect a Kawhi Leonard deal to, to go on. So we should definitely break it down, talk about it. When you look at James Harden's stats... He is a guy that averaged 34 points per game last season, six, seven rebounds, eight assists. So he's a guy that really fills up the box score, Riker. And I think he gets a lot of flack for underperforming in the playoffs, which has definitely been the case in some closeout games. But all around, usually, he's, he's a guy that holds up. He's not completely trash that disappears in those playoff performances. I think he's just gone up against you know, the Golden State Warriors and the, the last year's Los Angeles Lakers, and his teams were really undermatched. He probably would have won an NBA championship in 2017 if Chris Paul didn't get injured, So or 2018, I think that was the year that they missed. Yeah, they missed all those shots from three. So, 27 in a row. Yeah, yeah. so he, he's a guy that is proven to be one of those upper echelon players, a, a consensus top seven, top five player in the NBA. So... What would the Toronto Raptors have to give up in a trade scenario for Harden? Because certainly if he, we didn't have to give up a whole lot of assets and everything, he'd be a great pickup for this team. But I think our reservations would be having to give up the guys with the two jerseys behind me, OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, other, other picks. What do you think we'd have to give up to get James Harden? Yeah, and I think you undersold James Harden a little bit because he's not – a top five top seven guy he's probably the most prolific scorer that the nba has ever seen and regardless of whatever his placement is now you have better all-around players currently in the nba lebron james Giannis. quiet slipped a little bit from that conversation 
But in terms of putting points on the board, being able to score against any player, any team, constantly needing to be doubled, tripled, whatever, or else he's unstoppable, James Harden is probably the best to have ever done it. Like, I don't think that that is an understatement, Ben. The most prolific scorer that the NBA has ever seen. So it's not a bad thing to be in the conversation for it, but you're absolutely right. At what cost? And that cost is OG, definitely, in any trade situation plus Pascal or plus Van Vliet. If it's on the Van Vliet side, it's plus a lot of extra things and draft picks. And then is there any argument that we can make that makes sense to get rid of one of those guys to bring back James Harden? I guess the argument you'd make is you're still low on Pascal Siakam from the bubble. You don't expect him to really bounce back to the performance he was prior to the season because he was never at the level James Harden has been, as you mentioned, a top, probably top three scorer of all time, purely at that specific ability, and Siakam was never at that level, but he was certainly a guy that was creeping into the top 10 players in the NBA, top 12, top 10. You got, Most people, I think, in our comment section prior to the bubble were saying that, so that's not a crazy hot take, but so you're, you're sort of expecting Pascal Siakam to be more of that bubble guy rather than the guy he was prior to the bubble, so you don't think he has a very high ceiling. You think OG wouldn't be able to develop into a player that you and I sort of expect he will, especially me this season. I, I think he has the potential to have an all-star breakout style year this year. So you have to be lower on those guys and their potential going forward. Fred Van Vliet obviously has looked phenomenal this preseason, Was been, especially one of our main guys for the past two years. Was He got an NBA Finals MVP vote for for you know this, this Toronto Raptor championship team. So... Though you'd have to be a little bit lower on those players than I think you and I are. And the reason you'd sort of rationalize a move like this is you, you trade the 75% pieces, you know, the, the 50 cent pieces, the 25% pieces, you trade all those for a dollar and then fill in those holes as you go. And the Toronto Raptors have been extremely good, arguably the best team in the NBA at sort of filling those holes. So if you can get that A1 type player and then see, you know, a guy like Malachi Flynn, who looks phenomenal this preseason, or maybe a Boucher, Bembry, these style players come in and play real rotation pieces, maybe that could make sense. But I think for the, the amount we'd have to give up, especially where we don't know where James Harden's really at, and all the questionable stuff that's come out around Houston and stuff, you know, his involvement, his commitment to the team, he's only on a two-year deal. Maybe you don't do that, especially where our stars are now so young, where DeMar DeRozan really wasn't at the point we traded him. Yeah, and $41 million, then $44 million. That's tough. That's tough. And would he help land Giannis next offseason? What would the cap space look like? not digging too deep into that but then i look at depth chart because again i don't see packaging up siakam because you're not getting a big back in return if you got james harden and christian wood and you trade away pascal siakam i would 100 percent make that trade but they're kind of fine right now the houston rockets with christian wood uh demarcus cousins john wall eric gordon daniel house jr they have the makings of a pretty decent team. So if they bring in a couple of extra pieces, they might be fine. Like they, it might actually look nice for them to bring in Pascal at power forward, um, you know, OG norm, a couple of picks. Like that's not a bad package to, to receive in return for a guy at the caliber of James Harden. But again, you're, you're absolutely decimating then our depth at the four and five spot, uh, the front court, which is already questionable, I would say, this season, this upcoming season. Then the one trade proposed, and I don't know if it would technically match up or not, I saw it in the DM, was Kyle Norm OG and picks. So you're holding on to Van Vliet and you're holding on to Pascal Siakam. And so you probably slip Van Vliet at the one. James Harden obviously coming in at the two. Your depth is Malachi, Matt Thomas, Terrence Davis pending uh Bembry that's not a bad team right there but would that be enough to to make the Houston Rockets want to do it would you want to do it and again it's Kyle Kyle Norm OG picks like OG would be tough I don't think the the Rockets have said they want a real star back and I don't think OG has shown that level of trade value just yet. Obviously, in my eyes, your eyes, we think he can get to that level and has shown the potential to be that. But 
the the Rockets are looking for more established guys. So I think Fred or Siakam would have to be in a specific deal. If you sort of swap out OG and Fred in that, then maybe I, I, I you do that deal. I think you have to. But I don't know what Kyle Lowry's trade value is, Norman Powell's. But giving up two of OG, Fred, and Siakam, I think that makes it a little bit tougher, especially with all the uncertainty surrounding James Harden and Riker. You said if we got sort of a second piece back, you'd be less hesitant to give up Siakam in a deal. I don't think they get rid of Christian Wood right now because I think they're going to transition to a younger direction. They just signed him in free agency. But a guy that has been come out to be known as disgruntled with this Houston Rockets team, like it seemed like every player that played on the team last year was, was P.J. Tucker, who actually might be more of an attractive piece. We've traded for him, I feel. He's been on the roster twice in the past, and he left us, obviously, for the Houston Rockets. But would you be... a Willing to move Siakam in a deal for James Harden. Obviously, the Raptors also have to give up a couple pieces on top of it, so it's not just a straight-up Siakam-Harden uh, split. But would you be more willing to add Siakam to a trade deal if we also got P.J. Tucker back as well? Like, we're getting into some weird hypotheticals because P.J. Tucker's at 8. James Harden is at, what is James Harden at, like, 41 so you're looking at almost $50 million, and that, that's almost hard to match. But assuming salaries did match, I'd be I'd be a little bit more willing to pull trigger on that. The issue is, again, it's it's depth. It's depth at the four and five. So to get rid of Siakam in a trade deal, which I would be much more comfortable with than OG, than Fred Van Vliet, we would need back somebody to come in basically at the starting four position. Wait, because you'd be more comfortable slipping. to get rid of Siakam, Siakam. than OG and Fred? Yeah, I would be the most comfortable to get rid of Siakam. Really? Out of those three players, the guy that made all NBA second team last year and is probably the most like established out of those guys? Because as as composed this Toronto Raptors team, we have paid Siakam as if he is the number one guy. And if you're giving $30 million to a player, then that basically means that they need to be the person that wins a game for you. And this current team, Siakam's not going to win a playoff series he's not going to win a championship for the raptors i I have more confidence in van vliet being the guy that takes over a series and so we need to bring in it's already proven a guy that comes in above siakam so that siakam comes the number two and so you know you're paying 30 million dollars for a number two option and you don't even have a number one option on your team like of course i would get rid of him above the other guys above the guys that also haven't proven they can be that number one option on a championship yeah, team. Yeah, but if you're trading know, I think in you're... for James if you're trading in for James Harden, you're not expecting okay. either of them to become the number one option. I, I see what you're saying there, but I don't know if I'd give up right now because i I'm a bigger fan of just in terms of fandom of OG Ananobi. He's outside of Lowry, he's my favorite guy in the squad, just in terms of favoritism. But Siakam I think has shown he's more established and proven to be that type of player. We've seen it from Siakam before. We haven't really seen it in large stretches from Fred, and we haven't really seen that all-star potential from OG Ananobi at all. So that's an interesting take. And, you know, the P.J. Tucker, I think it would be a sweetener for this. But the interesting point, which I think you brought up, Riker, is would this help in the Giannis case? Because in our past videos, and we obviously have made a lot of videos on Giannis Antetokounmpo and from his past things that he's talked about, from quotes and stuff, is he'd be fine with being a second option or being a, a tier below these types of players. And in the original video we had about James Harden was, these guys sort of have a weird beef, Giannis and Harden. It was it was weird thing going on around the All-Star break and Harden, Giannis throwing passes straight at James Harden's head and all that sort of stuff. So we were kind of confused whether they would be, if this would be more of an attractive thing for Giannis. But Giannis came out in a quote and said he wouldn't mind being the second best player on a team if he played with James Harden. James Harden came out and added the Bucks to his list of teams in his preferred trade destination. That's obviously just to play with Giannis. No reason a guy like James Harden who likes to go out and stuff would be wanting to go to Milwaukee for anything other than Giannis Antetokounmpo. So maybe getting Harden in there and obviously you're letting go of uh, Siakam's big money and then probably maybe a Fred, the salary cap will probably be in a similar situation. Do you think that would help the case to land Giannis in, with all everything I just said? And he could fill that sort of front court depth that we would potentially lose in a hardened trade. Oh, in a heartbeat, yeah. If you were to land Harden and then sign Giannis. But the question is, if you trade away Siakam, how does that team 
stack up against the East this season, right? What would their playoff berth be? How deep would they go? Would would that be enough to convince Giannis to come? And the answer is, I'm not sure. But Ben, I also want to say, you know, we're, we're saying that other teams in the mix are Miami. Or first you said we... Houston's looking to receive a superstar. I've just been kind of thinking this as the podcast goes on. But the other teams that are at the top of um, the the odds to trade for James Harden, they don't. Houston's already said they're not going to tra- trade him to the Nets unless Kyrie Irving or Kevin Durant is included in that. So the Nets said no way, Jose. Right? If you look at the Miami Heat, who's a superstar on that team except for Jimmy Butler? And why Tyler would you trade Hero. up one? F- <laughs> yeah, right. So people are. They don't have a superstar that they can trade for him. My, the Bucks, they actually could put together an offer with Chris Middleton. You put Chris Middleton on a team with DeMarcus Cousins, John Wall. That makes sense. Like maybe Drew Holiday, you add him to the trade. They might have the best package. And the 76ers, I'm not sure where they're at with splitting Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, but I don't know. I I don't know. I this is this is such a tough one, Ben, because it's hard to say you straight up would not want to trade for James Harden, who is who he is he's such a good player it's hard to say no i wouldn't trade away a couple of pieces to land him but at the end of the day we're looking at trading away seriously og plus van vliet or siakam and i just i just don't think that i would want to do that in terms of fit in terms of what the toronto raptors do we're team we're a team that obviously loves to just shoot through have really athletic sort of slashing players that can drive, shoot threes, are well-rounded, they fit a system, they fit a sort of culture. Obviously, Kawhi has sort of developed this pre-Madonna narrative surrounding him with the LA Clippers, but while he was with the team, he had his lunch pail brought to the court every single game, all this sort of stuff. And I don't know if James Harden sort of embodies that same culture that we have, that I think a Pascal Siakam, a OG Ananobi, if he turns into that sort of all-star caliber player, Fred Van Bleed, a Kyle Lowry, all these types of guys in our core have. Maybe he'd embody that role if he came here, and he definitely would be a talent upgrade in terms of the players who are trading out immediately, and there's no debating that, but there's a certain culture, there's a certain set of players you want to have, and it's just, it's weird, it'd be a weird move to have. Obviously, I think I'd grow to really like James Harden if it happened, and I'd be a bit conflicted if it, if it occurred, but it's... It's not something I'm jumping to like like a Kawhi Leonard trade. It's not something I'm I'm excited about as a Giannis Antetokounmpo coming to Toronto. And maybe that's a hot take. Maybe I know this has been pretty. It hasn't been something everyone agrees upon in the Raptors world if they want James Harden or not. You and I sort of leaning on not when you have to take into account all of the things you'd have to give up, but. He is a superstar. So, and when last time we had a superstar, we won a championship. So, let us know what you guys think. You're the best for making this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Check out the website. And uh, we're recording these podcasts back to back. So, the shout outs will happen in the next video. So, we apologize for all that sort of stuff. But uh, actually, we have, a, we have another video lined up. So, probably a few videos down the line. But, <laughs> Rick, do you have any last words? Ben, final verdict. Straight up, one for one, Stanley Johnson for James Harden. I would do it. I mean, I would feel really? weird about it. Yeah, but I would go for it. I don't know. Has James Harden ever hit a game winner against the Philadelphia 76ers in the bubble? I don't know if he has. I would say absolutely not, Ben. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>